Hi, I'm Jay Schuberk, a family physician and diabetologist at Torrey University of California. We're here at the 79th Scientific Sessions of the American Diabetes Association in San Francisco. I'm happy to have with me Dr. Rucha Mehta today. She's an endocrinologist at Apollo Hospital in India and, and a, um, a frequent contributor to the American Diabetes Association. Thanks for Thank joining you. us. Thank you, Jay. Thanks for having me. You bet. I, I want to talk about a case today, and this is really a hot topic at ADA as well. Um, I've had patients from all over the world that come, and in Northern California, uh, I had a patient who moved in uh, from India. She's from Southern mm -hmm. India and had type 2 diabetes about four years before she came, and now it's been with about a total of six years. And since she's been moving to, moved to the United States, still has had trouble managing her diabetes. Her A1C is in the mid-8 range. She's gained a fair amount of weight, and she's asking me about you know, what kind of diet can she follow? What kind of uh, program? And she's heard a lot about ketogenic. But knowing her and knowing her diet, and that's particularly because she's vegetarian, mm -hmm. really, I'm struggling to give her good advice. And I, I know you have some experience with this. Do you have any advice for me about this patient? Yes, God, Jay, that's right up my alley. And it's great to hear, because as you're all aware, there's an increasing number of Indian patients who are now in the United States, and we're dealing with different ethnicities. Uh, and especially, as you mentioned, the key word was vegetarian in this and ketogenic diet. So what we have been doing, and as you know, I'm currently practicing in India, we have started uh, using all sorts of diets for our patients. And this morning, we heard about low carbohydrate as well as very low carbohydrate diet. So. Um, what I would advise for this patient, certainly we would do a very detailed history. We always begin in our patients with a detailed three-day dietary questionnaire, and we have sort of validated our questionnaire. And we also sit down and take in their physical activity. And what their preferences are, along with the micronutrients, so asking how much processed food they're eating per week, because we don't want them to be miserable while they're doing the diet. So we try to keep their dietary you know, activities or practices into consideration. What I would advise for her is initially, just as the first week when we start seeing this lady, we evaluate her fasting, uh, sugars. We also look at the postprandial sugars and what medications they're on. Every time that we change the diet, the first week, for example, is generally not a very low carb, but a low carb. So for example, if she was consuming 200 grams of carbohydrates per Easy. day, and we have uh, I have a poster today where we show most of our patients are eating averagely 200 grams of carbs per day, we would probably cut her down by 50% in the first week. So maybe do a 100 gram carbohydrate diet. So this is not a ketogenic a diet. Warm up. Yes, a warm up. Yes. So the first week, and therefore we titrate down the medications. We always find that when we put them on a lower carb diet, we need to cut back on their medications, which allows them to do, to, to, to go through the diet or they're gonna have a low blood sugar. Usually in the second week, we would start them on a ketogenic diet mm -hmm. and an Indian version of the ketogenic yeah. diet, a vegetarian version of the ketogenic diet. I also would like to add that if they're overweight, we make this a hypocaloric diet. Mm -hmm. But if they are not overweight, and most, a lot of our Indian patients, we like to call them the lean diabetic patients. So they are um, over, they are, they're not obese, they're overweight. So their BMI may be in the range of 27 or something. That's when we may not want to make them very hypocaloric. But if they're morbidly obese, that's when we will consider you know, a hypocaloric diet. Bear in mind our diet usually turns out to be hypocaloric to what their previous dietary pattern was. So this is when we start <coughs> them on a low carb diet, which is a ketogenic diet. So bringing them down to 50 grams or 40 grams or less by definition. That's a big drop. It needs to be less than 30 grams, but they may not tolerate that. What I like to do in my practice is we are calling it a cyclical ketogenic diet. So what we are doing is we put them on a keto diet. We monitor them with urinary keto sticks. Mm. So when they go into your ketosis, that's the day when we'll collect a blood sample like a day or two later. It, and everyone is variable. Some people go into ketosis within three days. Some people go into ketosis four days, five days. Just depends on you know your body storage types. And when they go into ketosis, we collect a blood sample to document that they're in ketosis, which could be for acetone or BHB. And then we try to encourage them to continue the diet for another 10 to 14 days, which means about two or three weeks of a ketogenic mm. diet. Now, um, are you interested in hearing about a sample vegetarian <coughs> menu? Is that? Well, yeah. well, tell me more about cyclical, because I want to hear the cyclical, and then we'll come back to okay. that. So by definition, what a cyclical ketogenic diet means is that you do ketogenic diet from Monday to Saturday, and you take kind of Sunday off, and then you go back again Monday to okay. Saturday. I think I've redefined ketogenic in uh, what, what, what seems to work for our patients, because we, we have a different goal. The prior cyclical ketogenic diet works more for weight loss. Mm. 
This is because we are trying to work on their diabetes and trying to see if we can help reduce the number of medications, improve glycemic control, and maybe even in the long run, if they can sustain this, try to reverse some of the, uh, reverse their diabetes. So it's so a what metabolic we, diet. So it's a metabolic diet. So what we are doing is we are putting them into ketosis for two to three weeks. Then we pull them out of the ketogenic diet with an initial week of low carb diet. Uh, and then again, we give them isocarb. And then again, a few weeks later, we take them into ketosis for two or three weeks. So for example, in a 12 week period, they would do ketogenic diet for roughly five or six weeks. And so at the end the of each, for half the time, yes. So at the end of each cycle and then during every cycle, we change their medications. Most of my patients during the ketogenic diet do not require any medications. It's mm. amazing, they love it and they really enjoy being on the medications for those two or three weeks, and hence they don't complain about the diet as much. And that, uh, that's gonna make it more possible to do it long term. Absolutely. If they, if they feel comfortable that they can keep Plus it Plus they're coming off the ketogenic diet, so they get those two, three weeks off, so they're ready and willing when they see their medications being reduced even in those two or three weeks off the ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. They're excited to go back on it and have the possibility of maybe reversing it. Now what we add in is uh, you know, something else that is really, I feel works very well, uh, is intermittent fasting. Okay. So what we do is a time-restricted feeding. Uh, what we're having them do is they'll eat between, for say, eight hours, and then we have 16 hours where they can consume clear liquids, green teas, maybe some black coffee, but they're really not having anything calories. that has calories or stimulating any of your metabolic hormones, so to speak. And uh, so far, we, have, we are kind of submitting something for 22 patients, and we have looked at 22 patients with diabetes, prediabetes, average duration anywhere from eight to 10 years, and with HbA1c's in the mean range of about eight, and average BMI is quite high, about 30. What we have found within a three month period, most of these patients were able to bring down their medication use by more than 50%. They dropped their weight, their HbA1c's got better, their fasting sugars, blood pressures, everything got better. So it's very encouraging. Uh, to see these results and hopefully we'll be able to sustain them out for a longer time. This is just the initial three month uh, okay. you know, yeah. results. And, that, yes. and the long term results are really critical. Yes, it'll be very exciting. So I want to ask you a little bit more, you know, and I, I, I introduced a patient who's vegetarian, but this is the, this kind of diet is mm -hmm. quite common now, regardless of your background. If someone wants to do a ketogenic like diet, but they're vegetarian, how mm -hmm. do you approach that? So especially for the Indian vegetarian patient and, you know, really speaking to me, there are a lot of myths around this ketogenic diet. It gets beaten up quite a lot, saying it's very high fat, bad cholesterol. What we need to keep in mind is a, a good ketogenic diet should really not have anything that's deep fried. We're not trying to say eat processed high fat foods. We're trying to use good fats. So what you wanna be using is, for example, in a vegetarian diet, um, the major ingredients would be using olive oil as the backbone for cooking. We use an almond and flaxseed bread, or what we call in the Indian diet, a roti. Mm -hmm. And uh, almonds, walnuts, really that is avocado, chia seeds. So those are the backbone so of your ketogenic plant-based fats. So for example, an average vegetarian diet that we use in India for ketogenic purposes, they start off in the morning with like a green tea, black tea, and then, uh, or a black coffee, and they can have what we call a cauliflower-based preparation. So it's like a cauliflower couscous kind of preparation. Mm -hmm. Or we also have something we allow called sprouted moong, so they can do a sprouted bean, kind of a, um, like a crepe. Mm -hmm. uh, if they eat eggs, we allow them egg whites with one yolk or cook it in olive oil. For lunch, they use a keto roti, which is made of almond and flaxseed, mm -hmm. and we have been able to make a good combination, which is very low carb, less than two grams, and it's high in fat, but the good fats. And then they eat a vegetable with that, and they'll have a Greek yogurt, a small portion of Greek yogurt. And then again, in the evening for dinner, it's usually a vegetable with some thing called paneer, which is sort of like a, an Indian cheese preparation, but it's kind of uh, not processed. You can make it at home too. So it's really good for you, it's healthy, it's got protein. So that way they're staying in their limits of having you know, the, just the right amount of protein, they're getting their fat and staying low carb. So it really seems to be uh, working out for our patients and they do variations using these food groups that we give them. So. Wow, so you shared a lot of great <laughs> information today. So I think first of all, regarding my patient, I have some things I can work with. I'd love to mm -hmm. maybe share some recipes. Absolutely, yes, we to, can do that for you. We know that this is an exciting time looking at macronutrient modification mm -hmm. as a treatment of metabolic syndrome, type two diabetes, and stay tuned because you'll hear more about mm -hmm. uh, ketogenic diets, intermittent fasting, and ways we can change the diet 
to uh, treat and prevent type 2 diabetes. Thank you so much for joining, our, joining us today and sharing all your expertise. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today.